friends i am a cloud solutions architect at microsoft who like making these videos and today we are going to solve a lead code problem called generate parenthesis now if we see some of the popular companies who have already asked this question there are companies like amazon facebook microsoft apple bloomberg uber lyft google byte dance spotify and nvidia so that's why i am paying my utmost attention i hope you also enjoy the video okay so this is a lead code medium problem and also very well like problem on lead code basically we are given an input number n and now we need to generate n pairs of parentheses so basically we need to write a function that generates all the possible combinations of well formed parentheses now these round parentheses i think they are called well formed parentheses now uh, we can try to understand these two examples but i'm actually going to take take it one step further and i'm going to show you four different examples to understand that what this problem is asking us to do okay now in this first example we are basically given n is equal to one pair which means we need to make one possible pair and all the combinations of this well formed parentheses so obviously the answer is going to be quite simple we simply need to return like uh, just one possible pair that we can make out of this one now suppose n is equal to 2 so now for n is equal to 2 we have the choice to take like two of these and two of these right we need to take four values uh, so basically the number of possibilities we can make is that we can actually make a parenthesis that looks like this and we can also make a parenthesis that looks like this these are the only two possibilities we can have and uh, this is what we need to return as the answer now things becomes a little bit interesting when we reach to n is equal to 3 uh, so when we get to the point where n is equal to 3 the possibilities we can make is so these are the five possible pairs we can make when n is equal to 3. Now notice that over here for every single piece we are using like three opening brackets and we are also using three closing brackets but we are just putting them in different pairs so that they generate like the well formed parentheses. Uh, same way if we try to do it with n is equal to 4 the answer is going to be pretty huge so let me just uh, draw it over here. So these are all the possible pairs we can make when n is equal to 4 and basically we are using 4 opening brackets and 4 closing brackets and arranging them in different sizes. So this is a very interesting problem. Now let's see that what are going to be the different approaches to solve this problem. So now the first approach that comes to our mind is a brute force approach. In the brute force approach what we can do is suppose we are given n is equal to 2 right. If we are given n is equal to 2 there is one thing guaranteed. We need to have 4 characters inside every single block of our answer. Why 4 characters? Because uh, we are generating 2 pairs of uh, parentheses. So 2 pairs of parentheses is basically going to be 4 characters at least right. So what we can do is uh, now we have 2 options to choose from. Either we can choose an opening parenthesis or we can choose a closing parenthesis. So what we are going to do is basically we can take every single possible pair that we can make of size 4 using these 2 characters and only the valid pairs we put uh, put them in the answer so suppose we are given n is equal to 2 what are the different pairs we can make let me make just a few pairs so these are just some of the few examples that we can make for four characters using like this opening and closing parentheses for n is equal to 2 and over here we only need to find the legitimate pair so okay we can find one legitimate pair and we can find another legitimate pair and i think this is going to be the answer that we need to return so we will put these two in the answer and then just return them but if you see this brute force approach is extremely inefficient uh, if we see like uh, time complexity the time complexity goes sometimes into like 2 to the power of 2n something multiplied by n just to check that whether the pair is valid or not and that is disastrous so no one is going to accept that so we will have to find a way to do something better so what we are going to do is we are going to do things smartly. How we are going to do things smartly? First, let's define our perspective, purpose. Our purpose is to generate two pairs of opening and two pairs of closing brackets and they has to be well informed or uh, valid. Now we need like two opening brackets. So that is a given fact. We need two closing brackets. That is also a given fact. Now there are some properties that we can use at our advantage taking consideration the definition of being valid. Now what is the definition of being valid? So basically if we are given n is equal to 2 there has to be uh, two opening parentheses and two closing parentheses. So that is one definition. Second definition for being valid is that we can only put a closing parentheses if there exists an opening parentheses before that. Again I am repeating myself we can only put a closing parenthesis if there exists a closing parenthesis before that we cannot start our uh, answer with a closing parenthesis because that wouldn't be valid. 
थर्ड थर्ड थिंग दैट वी नीड टू कंसिडर इज दैट वी कैन ओनली हैव दैट मैनी नंबर ऑफ ओपन पेरेंथसीज दैट इज इक्वल टू द नंबर ऑफ एन now you are saying that why am i repeating myself because this is going to be the very important property that we are going to use uh, so now once we know all of these things let's try to make some smart decisions on how we can actually generate the answer for valid parentheses uh, basically we are given n is equal to 2 over here right now we have option to choose like two opening parentheses and two closing parentheses so okay now what we are going to do is uh, for our answer generation always we will have to start with us an opening parenthesis right now we we created the opening parenthesis that starts with this one now we are going to keep track of few values first value we are going to keep track of is the number of opening parenthesis right so number of opening parenthesis that we have used so far is one uh, and what is the maximum we can use maximum we can use is two because that is the value of n we are also going to keep track of the number of opening parentheses we already know that is one right we are also going to keep track of number of closing parentheses and so far we haven't used any closing parentheses so that this value is zero and we can only add a closing parenthesis if the number of opening parentheses is greater than the number of closing parentheses because we already proved that over here now using this logic let's see that what is the sequence we can make okay so first we start with this value when we start with this value number of opening parentheses is one number of closing parentheses is zero now over here we have two options uh, and those two options are uh, we can either add one more opening parentheses or we can add a closing parentheses so let's see options in both of both of the cases the number of opening parentheses is going to be 2 and we can have this value to be 2 because we are given n is equal to 2 uh, and in this case the number of closing parentheses is still going to be zero because we have only used two open gap parentheses is over here now in this case the answer is going to be a little bit different uh, because the number of opening parentheses is going to be one and number of closing parentheses is also going to be one and this is also valid why because the number of closing parentheses can be one because we already had one open parentheses so uh, so far both of the cases are legitimate now again at this position we also have two more choices so over here we have the one choice to open and we have one choice to close now let's see both the options if we try to go one choice to open what we will happen is number of opening bracket is going to be 3 but that is not valid why because the, we are given n is equal to 2 explicitly so in this case we cannot go down this path so if we cannot go down this path we will actually backtrack and come back to this position now from this position we can only go towards the path of closing so if we go towards the path of closing so far the number of open brackets we have had is 2 and the number of close bracket we had is 1 so that is still valid that is still legitimate now again from this position we still have two options we can either open or we can close if we try to open we cannot do that because number of open is going to be 3 so we are not going to go down this path uh, if we go down this path uh, basically the number of open bracket is going to be 2 number of close bracket is going to be 2 as well and this is the exact condition we need because we are given n is equal to 2 so which means that there has to be two open brackets and two close brackets so we can put two conditions whether we can put like the combination of open plus close is going to be four that is going to be the double of what is uh, n or we can have like uh, o is equal to 2 and uh, c is equal to 2 both of them equal to 2 so this is also good so now we have reached this condition which means that whatever the path we actually make can make our ourselves into the answer so what is the path we took so first we started with uh, taking the opening bracket then again opening bracket then again closing bracket and then again closing bracket so let's put this value in the answer right so we are going to create a new variable answer over here and over here let's put one entry that okay two open two close that is good now let's start following the other path i'm going to clean this up a bit so it does not become any more di distraction so now in this case okay currently we have one open bracket one close bracket now again we have two possibilities so first possibility is we can open one more bracket or we can close one more bracket now let's uh, analyze both the possibilities if we try to open one more bracket basically the number of open brackets we are going to have is two let me clean this up a bit more and over here a uh, number of close bracket we had so far is still one so okay this is valid we can put this one now if we try to put one more close bracket the number of open bracket we have so far is only going to be one but number of close bracket is going to be two which is no a big no no why because we cannot have more close bracket than the number of brackets we have opened because that would defy the possibility of having a legitimate scenario so we cannot go down this path so we won't 
and uh, now again we have two choices at this position we can uh, open one or we can close one if we open one then the number of open is going to be three that is not valid that is not good so we are not going to do anything with this one and we will not go down this path if we go down this path then over here number of open brackets we have so far is two and number of close bracket we have so far is also two which is also the legitimate scenario so which means that this path is also going to be a path that we can add to our answer and uh, let's see okay so currently we have okay we have one open bracket one close bracket we have also have one open bracket and one close bracket and that's it now uh, initially remember we only started with this one opening bracket and then we had two possibilities and we actually exhausted both the possibilities so we cannot go down further anymore now because we cannot go down further anymore uh, we can conclude that whatever the values we find so far this is the complete answer and we can return this as the answer and basically this is the whole crux of the finding the optimal solution now you must be asking that uh, hey what we actually did was uh, we did something sim very important first we identify okay the one value then we had the uh, final case so final case was that whenever the number of opening is equal to n and number of closing brackets is also equal to n this is our final case and then at every single position we had two options to either choose an opening bracket and closing bracket and keep on repeating the same process until we reach to the end and we had some parameters in mind so if you see we are actually using dynamic programming at its finest because at any single previously computed value that is being used to calculate that which path we need to take and whether we can take that path or not so we are basically using dynamic programming plus backtracking to solve this problem and this is going to be like an amazing way to explain this problem uh, logically think that in the brute force what a disastrous result we were having and we actually brought it down to such like beautiful answer and then we are just presenting it so this is the whole power of uh, using any like computer language so before we start implementing the generate parentheses method first we are going to create our backtrack method uh, that is going to be our helper method that we are going to use recursively now for the backtrack method it is not going to return anything uh, but it is going to add all the values towards the answer and uh, inside the method we are actually going to create a list of lists that is going to store the answer we are also going to have a string builder to keep track of the current values we have and the number of opening and number of closing brackets and also the maximum number of values we can generate okay so now first let's create the uh, acceptable scenario so if basically the current length is actually going to be maximum times two uh, which means that we can actually we have reached to our answer and we can add it to our answer so this is the legitimate scenario now let's see say for an example we find out that uh, uh, the we have not reached the answer then what could be the possibility well first possibility could be the number of open brackets uh, that could be less than the number of maximum brackets that is allowed if that is the case basically for the current uh, string builder we can actually append an opening bracket so let's do that and uh, after adding the opening bracket basically we will have to call the backtrack method again with a reduced value of one open bracket so let's do that so in the backtrack method we are going to call the answer and we are also going to call the current uh, string builder list we have but for the open we are actually going to add one value and for the number of close brackets we are going to keep it as it is the max is also not going to be changed and that is awesome now there is also one more important thing we will have to do every single time we make a backtrack call and that is to delete one character that is located at the current length minus one because it is going to add an extra character so let's do that okay now same way uh, say for an example if the number of uh, closed brackets and they are less than the number of open brackets uh, if that is the case basically we can also add one uh, close bracket to our uh, self as well so let's do that and we are also going to call the backtrack method and uh, everything else is going to remain the same and basically this whole logic sums up our backtrack method now all we need to do is from our main method we simply need to create a list of list called answer so let's do that and then we are going to call our backtrack method now inside the backtrack method we are going to provide the value of answer we are also going to provide a new instance of a string builder 
going to provide the number of opening brackets that we have used so far is zero number of closing brackets is also zero and the maximum number of opening and closing bracket we can have is going to be the value of n and after getting the answer from the backtrack method we can simply return the answer to be uh, return the answer that we got and uh, basically that's it yeah let's try to run the code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's try to submit the code if we submit the code our solution beats a lot of other solutions it is really good in terms of time complexity and it is also really efficient in terms of space complexity as well so yeah i'm going to be very satisfied with the approach and uh, now i would be posting this solution in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you